Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Sir Cypher here, and I've been playing some more War Game Airland Battle. I thought I'd make kind of a two-part video. Um, part one showing off the deck system, um, and how to sort of put together a deck. And another video showing sort of some basic, uh, some basic things you should do at the start of a game. Um, what units to buy, um, where to go, what to do. Um, a little bit more in depth than my other two videos, which are more of just overviews. Because, like I said, this game, it's not really clear what you should be doing at first, what kind of units you need in your deck, uh, and what's going on. So first off, when you make a deck, um, you have a bunch of options. We'll just make a NATO deck here, because um, that's what I like playing most of the time. And when you make a deck, uh, you have options. And basically, you can set these three categories of restrictions. And the more restrictions you set the more, um, uh, the less options you'll have in your deck, the less kinds of units you'll be able to take. So for example, uh, if we create a all NATO deck, the, and the three options are nationality, you can pick that your deck can only use a certain nation's units, um, that it can only be a certain type, and that it can it's from a certain era. So for example, uh, if we just take a normal uh, NATO deck, you see, like, for example, for tanks, we have pages and pages of different kinds of tanks. For planes, we have all these different kinds of planes from every country in NATO. Um, if you look at infantry, we have just incredibly large numbers of infantry. But um, you don't get any bonuses. Um, there's no necessarily, you don't get any advantages. But you do get your pick of all the best units from every country. So, for example, um, you can take uh, um, uh, British tanks, which are which are pretty slow, um, but uh, really powerful for their cost. Um, you can take German tanks, which rule. You can combine these, you know, with expensive American aircraft, cheap, you know, different countries European aircraft. You can do whatever you want and you can sort of mish everything mishmash everything together into making sort of like a really good haul um, so that's one option um, or you can specify for example if I wanted to make a uh, British deck I get more activation points which means that I get more um, I get basically more slots in my deck I can have more different types of units um, um, and then over here um, we can specialize. So for example, let's take a British um, Marine deck. So basically all we can take is British Marines. And we'll keep the category um, the same. Basically what the category does is it lower, you can't have any units that were made after these dates. But the units you can get, um, you can call in more of them. So say, for example, we have the British Marine deck. Now if you look at tanks, you see we only have two options for tanks. We have the Centurion AVRE and the Scorpion light tank. Um, for infantry, basically, um, we mostly can only get Royal Marines. And then we can get some specialist infantry with anti-tank missiles um, and anti-helicopter missiles. Um, and you notice that in all these categories, there's a lot less options um, we can take. But uh, the units that we can take, for example, um, will get bonus experience. And you see here when you pick it, when you put a unit in your deck, you have an option between being able to call on a lot of a unit at low experience or only a few or at a higher experience. But if you are doing something like making a marine deck, um, it moves everything up a notch. Um, and, and just in case, I don't know if I made this clear in my video, when you start a match, um, with all of your units, each unit has a limited number of times you can call it in. So, for example, if you call in these uh, Royal Marines um, and this helicopter transport, and you call in all eight and they all die, that's it. There's no <laughs> you're not getting any more of these. I mean, you can you can bring multiple stacks of them, but um, you're not going to get uh, any more of that specific card. So there's that. So you might go like, wow, that's a lot of options. So I, I thought I'd show you my favorite deck. Um, which is my American deck, and maybe give you an idea of, of what you should have in a deck, and uh, 
to sort of uh, options you have. So the first thing you need is a command vehicle um, to capture points. I like this American APC. Uh, first of all, because you can tell it has has an air conditioner on the front, so it keeps <laughs> keeps my commander nice and cool on the battlefield. And also, you can see on the armor uh, diagram, it has two armor in the front and side, which is going to help it when it's um, you know getting uh, shelled by uh, enemy artillery to smoke it out. Now, there's all different options. Like I said, you can pick command command jeeps um, or command Humvees. But um, I think that those, these are generally a bad idea. For a little bit more, you can get something that has some armor. You can also get command tanks, which is an option. But um, most of the time, you don't want to risk uh, your command vehicle getting blown up. Um, some factions actually have really good command tanks. Uh, the, the M60 is not a particularly good tank. So this command tank is going to get killed by most other tanks. But you can get command tanks that are... Um, pretty tough um, and are going to be really hard to kill, for example, through by artillery or an airstrike or whatever. So if you have a really dangerous zone with no cover, you can have your command tank there um, and it's not going to get taken out by like an errant, you know, rocket or something. Um, it's going to take a serious attack to take it down. Uh, for um, supplies, you have different options. Um, you have trucks, which are normally pretty cost efficient and also you normally get a lot per per card so you see here um, on the fuel capacity over here this is how many this is how much supplies the thing carries um, so you see here this thing carries three times as much supplies but it also costs more and you only get uh, eight per card whereas m35 cargo you can call in a bunch but I still like to call in these the, these because um, a bunch of supply trucks are kind of conspicuous and you can hide these uh, in the woods and stuff and resupply our units. You don't have to have a giant convoy of crappy um, cargo trucks driving down the road all the time to resupply your troops. Um, I also have here some uh, Super Chinook uh, supply helicopters. These carry even more than the, uh, the Hemp's. Uh, they carry 2,000 but obviously they're pretty easy to get shot down by air. Um, but they can get to the front line a lot faster. So um, if you have an assault and you need to rearm really quick, um, you can pull back the guys who are out of ammo just a little bit behind the front line, land some Chinooks on the road, and uh, resupply them really quick on the go. And then you can just take off again and leave. Uh, and this here, I think, well, I guess it doesn't show up in the view, but this is the Ford Operating Base, the FOB. I think you saw it in the videos. Um, it has a bunch of supplies. You can only place it at the beginning of the game. Um, but other supply vehicles can actually resupply at the FOB. So one advantage of actually taking uh, supply helicopters like Super Chinooks is when they run out of supplies, um, they, can just, they can just fly right back over to the FOB, which is a lot faster than driving down a bunch of roads. Um, so they can fly back and resupply fairly quickly. Um, oh, another option for command vehicles is command choppers which um, you kind of have to have a specific reason to get a command chopper because they can't hide in woods, so they're always going to be in the open. And um, they have no armor and very little HP, so if anything lands around them, they're dead. But there are some, some strategies that use them. For example, you could fly into a forward point that, uh, you can, that allows you to call in units. You can land your chopper there, and then you can call in, for example, a real command vehicle. Um, and gain a really a really quick forward point to call in your units. So you can do stuff like that, but you have to have a plan. You have to know what you're doing, because otherwise it's just going to get shot down. Um, for infantry, uh, generally there's a couple different kinds of infantry you want, and also all infantry in this game uh, comes in transport. So you can't just buy a squad of infantry. You have to buy a squad of infantry in a transport. Um, for every faction, you can always just put them in a truck, which is only one point. Um, so you're always paying for the, the cost of the infantry and the transport it comes in. Um, but but those are pretty vulnerable to artillery and airstrikes and stuff. So unless you're just sending like masses of cheap troops, um, you generally want to send them in an APC. So a single machine gun, you know, won't or artillery shell won't blow up your whole convoy of troops. 
Um, there's lots of different kinds of infantry, and if you look at their little cards here, the symbols show you what they're supposed to be used for. You saw if they get the little thing with the tank blowing up. Um, these are um, anti-tank infantry. Uh, these are assault engineers. These are flamethrower infantry. These are commandos. Um, these are uh, anti-helicopter. Uh, these are, and these with the cross rifles is just general infantry. Now, if you look at a unit's card in the armory, it'll show you um, all the different weapons it has and uh, what they do. So as you see here, for example, if you look at the U.S. Marines, um, they have an M16, they have the N72, which is sort of like a light anti-tank rocket, and then they have an M60 as their squad automatic weapon. Um, you can compare them, for example, to like riflemen, um, who have basically the same weapons, but uh, riflemen, they only cost 10 points, um, because they're only accuracy 7, and there's only 10 guys in the squad, whereas um, U.S. Marines have 15. You can also compare different weapon systems to see what you want. For example, the Red Eye is a um, two-man squad with a uh, anti -air, a infrared anti-air missile. It's the precursor to the Stinger. Um, and you can see here there are only 10 points, plus their transport, whatever that is. And they have a range of 22 versus helicopters and 18, 20 versus airplanes at accuracy 7. But then you look at the Stinger for 5 points more, and it's accuracy 11. Um, so it's, you know, quite a bit better for shooting down um, enemy planes. And also the Stinger is uh, HE Power 5. The Red Eye is only 3. So, um, you know, if there's a bunch of... Uh, choppers flying in formation or something, the Stinger can damage multiple units. So you kind of have to uh, pick and choose your battles. One one type of infantry that um, is pretty prevalent in every other faction, but the Americans just have a really crappy version of, is ATGM infantry, anti-tank guided missiles. They only have the Dragon, which is a really bad um, anti-tank <laughs> missile. Um, it's accuracy 10, AP power 12, which is just, which is just basically garbage, um, and it's only range 1575. If you compare that, for example, to um, even like for like the tow, um, like that the Bradley carries, uh, you see here the 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 Ito has like another 800 meters range, twice the AP, and almost. Uh, twice the accuracy. So you don't really want to use uh, ATGMs. But anyway, for what I do have here is I have Assault Engineers and an APC for uh, clearing out entrenched infantry and houses and, and forests and stuff. They shoot their napalm rockets into the forest, kill lots of dudes. Um, I have Stinger Infantry here who ride into battle on a Huey because I like to send them to forward areas of the map. Um, in different areas, so they can deploy really quickly. Uh, and sometimes you need stingers on the front line really quick, and you don't want to wait for a Humvee to drive up a bunch of roads to get to you, so I like to put them in Hueys so they can get there fast. Um, then I have Marines in a twin Huey, which is like a faster version of the Huey. Um, and they're also, I like to put them in with my stingers, so if I need to take a forward location, I can put the Marines and the Stingers like on top of a mountain or something, and they're protected against planes and helicopters and also against enemy infantry climbing up the mountain. Um, and then I have just generic riflemen in here um, in a Bradley 2, which is actually really expensive. You see it's 55 points um, compared to all these other transports, but it carries, I think as I showed, it carries ITOs which are a really, really good um, anti-tank missile. They're really long range. They punch through basically anything. I don't think there's anything that AP-22 won't go through. Um, so I basically carry them around for that. I drop their infantry off, and then I hide them behind bushes and stuff, and when enemy tanks drive up, they get pegged um, by the eye toes. But they are very fragile. I think they only have armor. They only have armor, too. Um, so if anything looks at them looks at them scarily, the Bradleys will blow up. Um, but they also do have a Bushmaster uh, auto chain gun, which they can use to shoot at helicopters and other light vehicles, but mainly I use them um, to shoot toes at enemy tanks. And then lastly, I have a uh, US Marines in a uh, Lab 25, which 
has a Bushmaster on it, like the Bradley, um, but it doesn't have any tows. It's really fast on roads, so it's really good for charging into towns and stuff. I'm kind of on the fence about this one. I sometimes switch it between that and the uh, landing craft here with the grenade launcher, because this landing craft, you can see it has a little bit more armor. It also has an automatic grenade launcher, so it's a little bit better for um, clearing I enemy infantry out of entrenched locations. Um, but if it comes across any vehicles or anything, it tends to have a bad time. Whereas the LAV-25 is a lot more um, general purpose. So that's it for infantry. Um, you might be wondering what all these costs are. Um, if, you, if you look at this, you only have a certain number of points. And uh, every unit you take costs progressively more points. It's not that obvious with infantry. But if you look at tanks, you see how they, it gets more expensive the more units of a certain type you get. Um, so as you see in some of those specialist decks like the Royal Marines, I think you got like 40 something points. So you can call in a lot more varieties of infantry and different transports, a lot more different varieties of things. Um, you have more options. If you're playing either an all NATO deck or an all pack deck or a single country like America that doesn't have a lot of options, that doesn't, that doesn't give you a lot of points to work with, um, you have to really think about, um, you have to really think about what you're going to take. Um, because you have a limited number of slots. Uh, over here in support, these are your sort of support vehicles. Not support as in like repairs and stuff, but support as in like artillery, anti-air, um, things like that. So there's a couple, there's a lot of different options here. Um, and America basically has all the options, but America doesn't have very good, op um, doesn't have very good choices for some of them. Um, there's basically, there's three kinds of anti-air artillery that's kind of important, and I like to get all three. You have uh, IHOCs, which are radar guided and long range. You can see here they're really good against airplanes, 4,200 meters, accuracy 10, but they only have three missiles. Um, so, you know, you want to say they, you uh, want to keep them resupplied. And because they're radar, they're also vulnerable to enemy SEAD planes, which will home in on their radar signature and shoot a missile at them. Um, you also have the Chaparral, which is a uh, infrared radar, and uh, so it's more against more effective against choppers. You see, it's 3,500 range against choppers, um, and that's more of the long-range chopper defense. So these two, these two here are are my favorite: long-range chopper and air defense. You have other options um, that you can take for um, air defense. For example, you can take this Humvee with stingers on it. But um, I like the Chaparral and the Hawk. Um, and then lastly, you need kind of generally short-range air defense against helicopters. Um, if like a swarm of helicopters comes up, you want to be able to shoot it down. So for that, I like the Pavads. And it is a radar-controlled Gatling gun, and it's pretty good. It's pretty accurate. Um, range 25 or 2450. So uh, if in any helicopter peeks over a mountain into your troops, it's going to get a face full of Vulcan rounds. Um, and, and, and on some of these units, there's different varieties of, for example, you can just take the normal Vulcan, which doesn't have radar, um, and is a lot cheaper. But I like the, uh, you see how the normal one, it's less accurate, has less range. Um, but I like the Pavads. I think it's, I think it's pretty cool. Um, and then the second big thing for this category is artillery. Um, you want to make sure, oh, and, and how you know, for example, I don't think I said it, how you know, for example, that the Chaparral is uh, infrared is uh, if you look at the, uh, if you look at the, uh, the missile thing here, it tells you all about it. Um, it says it's an infrared missile. It says it's AOE, so when it hits an enemy chopper or plane, it makes a big explosion. It's fire and forget. So if you, you fire the missile and then the enemy plane, you know, uh, flies out of your range, it's still going to hit it, or it's still going to try and hit it, because it's fire forget, and stationary means the missile can't be fired on the move. Um, if you look here, for example, for uh, radar, um, for the uh, the Hawk, you get different things. You see here it's AOE, sta stationary, all that, but it's radar guided, so that lets you know that enemy SEAD planes can uh, home in on it. Same thing with the, uh, with the Pavads, it's also radar guided. 
So different, um, so there's different uh, options there. Now for artillery, um, there's pretty much three, well there's pretty much like, I guess, I guess four main types of artillery in this game and they all have different roles, um, but normally you can't put all of them in a deck because you just don't have enough room. Um, you, it ends up costing too many points, so you kind of have to decide what you want. Um, or, I mean, you can make a deck based around a specific theme, but you basically you have mortars, which are short-ranged, um, they carry a lot of rounds, they're pretty mobile, um, and they're pretty good only against infantry. Um, you, they can also drop smoke to cover, to, uh, cover in advance or whatever, but primarily... Uh, they're only really good against infantry, so they're going to get getting infantry out of forests, getting infantry out of buildings, um, and providing close fire support. Um, but basically, they do nothing against tanks uh, or anything but like the weakest of armored vehicles. They're not really going to do anything to. Um, then you have uh, two, uh, like what I like to call like light tube artillery, or just like normal tube artillery, which are like you know howitzers. And these are a lot longer range. You see here, for example, most of these ranges of weapons have been a couple thousand meters. You see how, for example, an Abrams can shoot 2275. Um, the mortars can shoot, you know, 6300. So about three times that. Um, these can shoot basically across the map. You see here the pallet in here, the most advanced one, can shoot 30,000 meters. And we haven't even touched the super heavy. Oh, they actually can't shoot as far as the pallet. But, I mean, they could shoot basically across the map. So you can keep them in your base and shoot across the map. But the longer shots you make, the uh, the lower your accuracy can will be. But anyway, uh, these here, um, the big thing you want to be looking at is accuracy, range, and HE power. The HE power is how big of the explosion is going to be. Um, and these, you can see, can't don't carry nearly as many rounds. The Paladin carries 24 um, the, you know, the M109A2 carries 36, so they actually tend to run out of ammo quite quickly, so they need to be supplied. But these are long range, fairly accurate, um, decent against either infantry or, um, lightly armored vehicles, and, uh, they are pretty, pretty effective support. Uh, now, then you also have super heavy artillery which is something like this, uh, which can does a lot of damage. It has a giant explosion. They're fairly accurate because they shoot um, such a big shell. Um, but you can see here it only carries two rounds at a time. So it runs out of ammo really quickly. It needs to be constantly supplied with more ammo. Um, and since it's a big target, it moves really slow. It's really vulnerable to enemy artillery shooting back at it because they'll see your artillery coming and they'll just shoot back at where it came from. Um, and, you know, your your giant artillery base might not be able to get out of the way in time. And also airstrikes, things like that. So, um, you generally want to use, you don't want to just like, you can't really just like saturation barrage an enemy with super heavy tube rounds. You um, kind of use it to snipe, you know, special targets. Like you get a glimpse of somebody's command vehicle or you know where their artillery is or like, an anti-air battery and you drop a couple of giant 203 millimeter shells on it and do a lot of damage. Uh, and then also there's rocket artillery which the, MR, the uh, MLRS is unfortunately probably the worst rocket artillery in the game. I think it is at least uh, because it's expensive and it's just really bad. Partially because in this game it doesn't have the cluster sub munitions that it does in real life and it did in this time period. Um, but basically rocket artillery, the whole point of rocket artillery for the most part isn't to kill things because it has a really wide dispersion. Um, each round generally doesn't do that much damage, especially the Soviet ones with like, that shoot like a hundred rockets. But the idea is that it, is it causes suppression, it dazes and stuns the enemy, um, which it does in this game. So if the enemies all hold up in the forest and you drop a rocket barrage on them and then you storm in with your tanks and infantry, um, they're not going to be able to respond effectively. So if you just shoot rockets randomly um, at the enemy where you think they are, you're, you're just going to waste supplies because they basically only have one salvo and it takes a lot of supplies to fill one back up. Uh, and you're not going to really kill anything. The enemy will just repair all the stuff and they'll just keep coming. So 
you generally want to use rocket artillery um, in support of other operations to daze and confuse the enemy uh, or you know to stun them while you move in uh, with your assault force so there's that uh, the only one I have right here rock eyes I have a mortar carrier um, sometimes I take the paladin or the M109 A2 instead depending on how I'm feeling but I generally don't use super heavy tube rounds because uh, they just take too much supplies and they eat through all of your supplies that you could be using for other stuff. So, uh, for tanks, America doesn't really have that good of tanks. You'll, you can look at other factions. Um, but basically what you're looking at here is you want to look at the frontal armor is the big, is the big thing, is, is what you want. And then you want the accuracy, AP, and range of the main gun. Um, other things that are kind of important is the stabilizer. If a unit doesn't have a stabilizer, it basically, it basically like it can't really fire on the move. Um, it's just not going to hit anything. And uh, so, but units with very good stabilizers, stabilizers can fire on the move, so your tanks can advance up and shoot or chase units down. Um, the off-road speed is kind of important, and also the the fuel capacity is kind of important. A lot of the older tanks have really bad fuel capacity, so in order to follow up on a push you have to refuel them um, I have right here I have two tanks that are prototypes if you take if you take a national deck you gain access to the prototypes for that nation which are certain units that are either at the time were rare experimental or slightly ahead of their time uh, so if you pick American deck you get access to the American prototypes uh, one of which is the M1A1 Abrams, which is the uh, the version of the the main battle tank for the Americans that has the 120 mm 120 millimeter gun. The original Abrams had a 105 rifled gun, which is not <laughs> pretty subpar. You can see the normal Abrams is 90 points, um, and it's got pretty decent front armor, but the gun only has AP 13. And if you look at the Soviet tanks, that's not going to get you very far. <laughs> Most of the, the Soviet tanks around this cost have like 16, 17, 18 armor. So you're, it's an expensive tank, and you're not going to be able to punch through the really heavy Soviet tanks. So I'm not a super big fan. Um, I like the M1A1. It has two more front armor. You can see the gun is a lot better, a lot more accurate. Um, it's longer range. It's a 120 millimeter smoothbore instead of the uh, the rifle gun there um, and also it has a very good stabilizer and it's faster it's basically just it's basically just a uh, oh it's actually slower than the original Abrams well then I was wrong on that but it has a very good stabilizer so um, it can uh, drive up a road and just blast guys and and more importantly if you're getting overwhelmed you can tell to go in reverse and it can retreat away from the enemy um, and just snipe guys left and right. So that's normally my 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 heavy tank I use. Um, for my sort of medium tank or uh, mid-range tank, I like the MBT-70, which is another American prototype. It was the tank that was originally supposed to um, be the Abrams. Uh, the M60 was Americans America's like post World War II um, tank through like the 50s and the 60s. Um, and it was, and and this is just an upgrade of an even earlier tank, which is the M48, which of itself is an even is just an upgrade of an even earlier tank, which is the M26 Pershing from World War II. So, not not a very so basically, this tank was just like um, upgrade after upgrade of the same tank. Um, so the MBC70 was an attempt to make an entirely new sort of tank to replace it. Uh, and its its big thing is it shoots these I don't know how you say, I know it means shiligra shilag shilag I know it means club in Irish I think and uh, it shoots these anti tank missiles out of its main gun which are pretty long range and have pretty good AP power um, but it only carries four but it has pretty good armor it's pretty fast and it also has an auto cannon on the roof which um, is pretty good for for sniping uh, little enemy light vehicles to try and sneak up on you. Oh no, that's the uh, that's the main cannon. This is the auto cannon. It's pretty good for sniping uh, 
enemy enemy light vehicles, enemy helicopters, enemy infantry while the main gun is firing. So that's this is my uh, this is my sort of like mid-range tank. I also have the Starship, which is an upgraded version of of this this bad boy right here, which I was talking about, the M60 Patton, which is an upgrade of the the M the M48, which is an upgrade of the Pershing. But um, the uh, the Starship was an attempt to to use this sort of uh, missile technology that you you could shoot missiles out of the main gun. It was an attempt to adapt to the M60. Um, it actually never really saw any real use. This was actually a thing in real life. Um, they did make they did make quite a few of these, um, but it never really saw any action in real life. But in the game, they're pretty decent. You can see here, it's slightly worse than the, the, the one that the MBT-70 has. It's two less accuracy, and it has less armor, but it's, it's significantly cheaper, and it carries nine missiles. So um, it can still punch through most Soviet uh, tanks, and it's pretty cheap. Uh, and then if I'm just fighting a bunch of light vehicles, I like to send in the M60A1 Rise Patton, which is actually not that great. Um, I should probably consider finding a different tank, um, like maybe the M60A1. But, I don't know, it works okay for me. And this is just kind of an all-around just tank. It's going to lose to any decent Soviet tank, but, it's, but it, it'll kill infantry, it'll kill light vehicles, um, and it's pretty cheap. So that's what I do for tanks. Um, there's all sorts of other tanks that you can get um, for different factions. For example, we have uh, the uh, engineering tank with the big gun um, with the big AOE, which is pretty good for clearing infantry out of forests and uh, blowing up buildings and stuff. Um, we have scout tanks. Um, there's different stuff. You can get really cheap tanks and just swarm the enemy, but I don't really like to do that. Um, so you have a lot of options for deciding what kind of tanks you want. Um, so yeah, um, for recon, recon is very important. Recon is how you figure out what's going on with the enemy. If you run out of recon, it's pretty bad. Um, if all your recon dies, because then you have no idea what's going on. They can just sit outside of your range and shoot you because you can't see where they're shooting from. Um, so there's three, there's three basic types of recon. You have recon helicopters. Um, you have recon infantry and you have recon vehicles. The most important thing you want to look at when you're deciding recon vehicles is the optics because that's that's how far they can see and uh, that's their chance of seeing an enemy unit, you know, hidden behind a bush or whatever. So the best is exceptional. Um, very good is pretty decent, um, but you want to get exceptional. If you can, you can see this is why I have the more expensive Kiowa here with the little little like weird thing on the roof um, because that give that has exceptional optics and the normal Kiwa only has um, very yeah very good optics um, but Scott Hel Scott helicopters are very fragile mine gets shot down all the time so um, you need to be kind of careful and the enemy is almost always going to see your scout hopped copter You'll be able to see them, but they'll be able to see you hovering over the mountain or the forest or whatever. Um, recon infantry. Normally, there's only one type of recon infantry per nation. So um, if you're doing a national deck, national deck, you'll just use their recon infantry. Otherwise, um, you can pick. Um, you can also generally use, I think, all special forces infantry. Um, is also technically recon infantry because they all have pretty good optics. So you can use something like Delta Force as scouts, but I don't know. So um, uh, you see here, for example, I have these rangers in a Blackhawk so they can get to where they need to go. The advantage of recon infantry is, again, is that they're hard to spot. So you see they have, they have very good stealth. So you can put them somewhere like in a forest. You can see the enemy, um, but they can't see you. One thing you might want to do is if you're putting the infantry in a situation like that, you might want to turn off their weapons because um, you don't want them to shoot at enemies that are near them. But normally if they're near enough to get shot at by the rangers, the ra you know, they're going to spot the rangers anyway. But um, the rangers are good for, see, recon infantry is good for scouting out the enemy when they can't see you. The problem is they're slow, they're fragile, and they're limited by the terrain around them. For example, if 
rangers are on a forest, they're only going to be able to see the side of the forest that they're sitting out of. Um, if there's enemy on the other side of the forest, they'll have no idea because they can't see through the forest either. So um, you need to be aware of that. If you put your rangers in the middle of a forest, they're not going to be able to see anything except trees, presumably. Um, then you have recon vehicles. Um, I like the recon Bradley because, again, it has toes, which are which rule. It has very good optics. The only American scout with exceptional optics is the Jeep. And, yeah. Um, it kind of depends. Some people like to get um, little tiny cheap scout vehicles. Um... I like to get the Bradley because it can move around with my main with my main force and contribute um, to the battle. Um, and you know it's it's not super good decently armored, but I mean it it can take normally uh, like artillery and small arms fire and stuff. So I like I like uh, taking that. Vehicles is kind of a catch-all, and America doesn't have very is missing out on some of the categories that. Uh, are are that are good vehicles? Uh, for example, like a lot of other nations have really good um, ATGM carriers. They're like tracked armored vehicles that carry anti-tank missiles for long-range combat. Uh, the U.S. only has ATGM jeeps, which can easily get sniped by the enemy. So I don't I don't really like them that much. Um, you have flamethrower tanks which are okay for burning infantry out of buildings, but they're pretty short range, so they have to get pretty close. Um, you can see here, these are, uh, these are tow missile launchers here. Um, and there's also other kind of miscellaneous <laughs> weird vehicles, like the, the Antes. Um, this, is, this is just a normal, this is just a uh, auto cannon, a, uh, a Vulcan vehicle. Um, it's it's designed for shooting ground forces as opposed to the one in the support section, which is designed for shooting down helicopters. Um, so I don't actually have any vehicles because I don't really feel the need for them. Uh, helicopters are helicopters. Uh, <laughs> pretty self-explanatory. There's all different types. Um, I feel like there's three. There's three main um, categories you need to fill for helicopters. And for some factions, for example, their infantry transport helicopters are also like attack helicopters. So, for example, the Russians, um, they can put their infantry in Heinz. So you might not need to bring attack helicopters in the helicopter tab because your helicopters can just drop off their infantry and then fly around and blow stuff up. But America can't do that. So, so we have to take dedicated attack helicopters. Um, but the three general types of helicopters that are kind of important is you need, uh, oh, you don't need, but um, uh, anti-helicopter helicopters, which are helicopters that can shoot down enemy helicopters. And these are important because a lot of times you'll, um, you know, you'll get attacked by airplanes, you'll have helicopter rushes, different things, and, and uh, you need something that can respond to it quickly. Maybe you don't have any AA in the area or they, they blew up your AA and you need to get something there fast. Um, a lot of planes can't, uh, can't shoot at helicopters. And, yeah, I don't know. You just, sometimes you just need a helicopter with missiles on it to shoot down other helicopters. So this is just a uh, Kiowa with four stingers on it. It's pretty cheap, pretty basic, but it gets the job done. Um, and then the next thing that's that's good to have is an anti-tank helicopter. So here we have the Seahawk with, uh, almost as an afterthought, it's got four Hellfire missiles on it, which are fire and forget heat missiles. And you can see here they're very accurate, a lot of AP, um, AP-26, so they'll basically go through anything. Um, so as, you see, as long as your Seahawk doesn't get shot down, that's four dead tanks right here in this little... In this little weapons rack. So that's what I use it for. And it's pretty cheap for how much it costs. And then you normally kind of want something, some sort of uh, just general purpose, you know, infantry support helicopter that can just support your advance. And I like the Super Cobra for that because it basically it has got all your bases covered. It's got the chain gun for mashing up infantry, um, for blowing up light vehicles and stuff. It's got... Uh, uh, AIM-9 missiles for shooting down enemy planes, 
which is nice. It's always fun when an enemy plane comes in on attack run and your super cover shoots it down. Very embarrassing. This missile's right here. And it also has um, eight toes, which aren't quite as good as Hellfire's, um, especially because they're guided, which means that the, the super cover has to remain still and get have a have a continuous view of the target to guide the missile in. Um, the Seahawk can just shoot a missile and then turn around and shoot a second missile at something else. Doesn't matter um, because the Hellfires guide themselves. Uh, the Super Cobra has to sit there. So it, it can't, it's not quite as good at destroying tanks, but it's a lot more multi-purpose. Um, there's other options. The other obvious option that a lot of people will take, and it's American prototype, is the Apache, um, which is way more of a, just a dedicated um, ground attack tank killer. Um, it's more expensive than the Super Cobra. Um, basically has no way to shoot down enemy airplanes, but it has eight Hellfires, which is obviously pretty crazy. Um, it has rocket pods. Uh, it has a pretty baller chain gun. But I like the Super Cobra a little bit better because I feel like um, too often I have my expensive helicopter get shot down by some little crap plane that somebody sends in. Or, um, you know, my Super Cobra's there and there's an enemy chopper coming in and the Super Cobra can take it out. But the Apache has to fly close enough to use his chain gun. But it's, you know, it's your decision. There's also the Hog and the Heavy Hog, which are, these are pure, like, infantry support choppers. They just have rockets and grenade launchers. And therefore, you know, destroying infantry with no, uh, with no anti-air. Um, by just blowing them up with grenades. Now here we have planes. Um, I prefer some sort of exp some really expensive planes, which tends to uh, um, bite me in the ass quite often. But I have the Raven, which is the SEAD plane, um, shoots anti-radar missiles at really long range. In real life, um, it's sort of interesting. But this plane was always completely unarmed. Its whole job was just to like jam enemy radar and do electronic countermeasures. I don't think they ever put any missiles on one, so uh, I feel like they just kind of wanted to put it in the game, and so they were like, well, we have to put missiles on it or no, <laughs> no one's going to use it. So this game, it's a Seattle plane. Um, so you can see here, actually, this is a good example. Um, you see here our longest range anti-air is 4,200 meters. The Soviet equivalent, the Buck, is pretty similar to that, um, whereas... The Raven shoots 4,900 meters away with its missiles. So um, if, as long as you're careful with it and you have a good idea where their um, AA is, you can shoot and get out of there. Now, the, the probably the most important thing for planes, besides their weapons and how fast they go and stuff, is their ECM, which um, basically determines if they're going to get shot down by um, radar-guided stuff. Um, now, not everything's radar guided, um, most infrared stuff just doesn't care, it'll just, it'll lock on anyway, but infrared stuff is, is lower range, and why ECM is good is because, um, you don't want your plane to get shot down before it can drop its bombs, and the radar stuff is the longer range, more powerful stuff, so there's that. Um, so the Raven shoots down enemy AA. We have the Nighthawk here, the Stealth Fighter, which drops this, this one big bomb. And um, it is uh, it's a Stealth Fighter. It's basically, it's undetectable by radar until it drops its bomb. And um, even before it drops its bomb, it has exceptional stealth, which is its chance to be spotted. Um, which doesn't necessarily affect, like, whether or not an infrared missile can hit it, but the infrared missile battery has to see the Nighthawk in order to shoot the missile. So, unless the Nighthawk flies right over the thing, to drop, unless it's flying right over a thing to drop its bomb on it, um, odds are the thing is never even going to see it in the first place to shoot its missile. Um, and then we have the Phantom Two, which has Napalm, which is the... Uh, you, the the thing of choice for, you know, blowing units out of forests and towns. And also you can use it for other nefarious purposes like 
like setting an entire road on fire so the enemy can't fast travel down it. All sorts of exciting stuff. Um, you drop napalm. Um, there's a cheaper, there's a cheaper phantom, but I like the uh, I like the one that has twice <laughs> twice as much napalm for 25 more points. I feel like you're getting a lot more napalm. Um, and then I have as an air superiority fighter, I have the Tomcat, which I'm kind of on the fence. Sometimes I use the Tomcat. Sometimes I use the Eagle. Um, the Eagle is a dogfighter. Um, it's designed to dogfight enemy planes. It's fast. It has all different kinds of missiles. And the Good Eagle has exceptional ECM, which means that enemy radar missiles um, are going to have a really hard time blocking onto it. Um, but if you notice here, the ranges of these, uh, the longest one is 6300, the Sparrow. The AIM-9s are a lot less than that. Uh, the uh, the Tomcat uh, shoots 12,000 meters. So that's really far. So it can fly on your side of the map and still shoot guys down. Um, but if enemy any enemies come over to dogfight with it, it's going to kind of be in trouble because it's not a very good dogfighter. There's all sorts of other different planes. There's other SEAD planes like the Wild Weasel, which is a, a phantom... One, you have multi-purpose planes like the uh, the Hornet, um, Strike Eagle, all different stuff. But the thing you want to remember with planes is if is if um, you know a, an enemy missile can shoot down an expensive plane just about as easily as shoot down a cheap plane. Um, so if you send in a 200-point plane. You really need to either make sure it's not going to get shot down or it's worth it. So I prefer using a more like specific planes for specific purposes um, than using expensive multi-purpose planes. But there's different opinions on the matter. Um, of course, there's also the Thunderbolt, which is a ground attack plane. Um, but yeah, so this is my American deck. Um, hopefully it might have given you some ideas if you have no idea what you're doing in this game like I did a couple weeks ago. Um, where to start and what kind of units are good or at least um, what, are the, what kinds of units I think are good. So um, hopefully I didn't bore you but uh, now I'm going to make a short video explaining kind of like how a game flows and... Uh, what you should kind of be doing because it took me a while to figure that out and hopefully I can alleviate people who watch my videos of some of that confusion. So thank you for watching and have a nice day.